Hey guys, Matt here. Um, while we're on the subject of updating our out-of-date software on our computers, uh, another program has um, been suggested to me by Adam on my Facebook page. Um, the program is called Patch My PC. So let's go ahead and take a look at this site. Actually, let's do it through uh, the virtual machine here. Now yesterday I ran Sukuni as PSI um, and I showed you how you could update your out-of-date software um, using Sukuni on PSI. Now a couple of you guys um, wrote back and said, hey, Sukuni and PSI crashes on Windows 8.1. And yeah, it does. I, I tried it out of my um, 8.1 box, uh, my gaming box in the other room, and it crashes no matter what I do. So. So we're going to try out another application um, called, like I said, Patch My PC. Now, I did play with it today, so I have used it. Now, there are some things in there that are nice and some things that are not so nice. Patch My PC. All right. Uh, if you go right to their site, they have a nice little... Uh, site right here that explains exactly what it does. You can download this uh, free updater. Gives you a little bit, uh, tells you kind of how it works right there. We'll just go ahead and download it. As far as I can tell, it is standalone. Like you could run this from like a USB stick, something like that. It doesn't actually install. So we'll go ahead and double click on it, or just click on it, double click or click. It's going to be in your downloads folder. Uh, I did run into this today. This is um, kind of weird. So on Windows 8, you have to download and install .NET Framework 3.5. So we'll go ahead and download this guy. I had some issues today getting this. I'm having some internet trouble at my house. Whole family is like uh, freaking because uh, you know Netflix is cutting in and out, <laughs> and I'm trying to do work. Uh, anyway, so. That does take a while to download. That does kind of suck, but you know, once it's done, it's done. So I'll be right back. Okay, so that's been downloaded and installed, and that was the .NET Framework 3.5. So we'll go ahead and close that and bring this into full view. All right. And let's go ahead and run this guy again. And at first it looks like nothing's happening. I believe it's doing some kind of little pre-scan thing. So it comes back and it gives me a list of um, what's installed, what's out of date, and what's not installed. So stuff that's installed is going to be, um, well, right in this, in this case, it's red. Um, so green means already patched. Red is not patched. Update will be applied. Black is not installed. So um, we'll go ahead and before I do that, I can make one little change. Okay, let me make sure this thing's still recording here. Cool. All right. Anyway, we'll go ahead and perform our four updates. So it starts downloading these updates pretty quickly. Now that all depends if my connection actually stays solid, which it's pretty bad tonight. <laughs> Oh, it's well. So it brings up this. I didn't see that. It brings up this message. It says this update requires Firefox to be closed. Uh, please close Firefox, and the update will begin. So that's pretty nice. You don't have to like restart the whole thing over again. And we'll go ahead and close every app that needs to be updated. Basically, quit that. And you can see, you know, it's successfully verified the download URL, um, URL and size. 
and uh, it's downloading the Firefox update, gives you the size of it. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'll just wait for that stuff to start, or finish, I mean. So it'll keep going through all these applications that need to be updated. So, you know, now it's on it's onto the Java. It'll give you like a little, uh, it'll say, you know, Firefox downloaded successfully, uh, Firefox installed successfully with exit code zero. Gives you like a little bit of an update. But I'll tell you though, the weirdness that I did have with this application. Um, it says, you know, install just couldn't start and it would just fail. It just wouldn't do it. Um, or it would say, like in like in my, the other case, I have another PC in the other room um, and I installed this and WinRAR failed to update even though it said it was successfully installed with exit code zero. So, I mean, it's not exactly 100%, but it's really a better way to patch your PC than just kind of guessing what's out of date. So n nothing is like, I haven't come across a single time where this has been 100% perfect, but it's not bad. I mean, it's free. You can run it like off a USB stick. The only thing I wish they would do is um, when it fails, and it should fail on, I think, Foxit Reader in this computer. When it fails, give me the option to, like, somewhere in here, click the actual installer and let me try to install it myself. Uh, here it just says, you know, okay, it failed, and that's it, too bad, you know. I would like to see something like here it says, okay, it failed. Uh, go ahead, click here to try to install it yourself, and that would be awesome. So maybe they'll, they'll uh, do that. <laughs> That would be uh, sweet. So while this is downloading, it does a lot of other stuff too. Um, it's got a big old options button here. Lots of options. I'm not going to go over all these, but you can read through them. And you can skip doing updates if you want on some things. It's got a little startup tab. And um, that's pretty cool. It makes uh, clearing up your startup pretty easy. So if you want to go ahead and click on like Skype, and you don't want Skype to start whenever your computer starts because it's just kind of a waste. I mean, you may not Skype every single day. Uh, just go ahead and say disable. I don't want that to start. I don't want it to use, you know, my processor and RAM and all that stuff. Um, it's got an uninstaller, so I can go through and uninstall whatever I don't want. And you can actually schedule it. I have not done this, um, but it says the schedule feature requires a dynamic link library, a DLL. Would you like to download this and use the schedule uh, feature? It's tiny. So you download it. I just clicked on apply recommended and hit save. And now it should check every day for um, any outdated software. Um, and then your about tab. You can actually go to their home page. They have a pretty active form it looks like. And then you can take a look at the logs. So, um, let's go ahead and look through this. So, yeah, Foxit Reader failed to start installation. And like I was saying, go ahead and give us a link down here that says, okay, you know, here's the installer. Try to install it yourself. That'd be awesome if they could do that. Um, and if you recheck your software, it says, you know, the, the software above is not compliant. You try to do it again. And nothing happens. It just fails. Um, up here, it does give you like a little bit of a list. It tells you, you know, which operating system you're using. Um, we have 14 Windows updates to be installed. So it's going to go ahead and contact the Windows update server. We'll go ahead and let it do that. Okay, so the Windows update part was taking like way too long and it's not their fault. It's my internet connection tonight is just really messed up. But I wanted to show you one other cool little thing with this application. You can click the other tab right here. And let's say you want some of the software that they actually manage, some of the stuff that they actually are able to update. Now, in this list, Foxit Reader is there, but we already know about that. There's something going on there. But let's say I wanted something like um, Defragler. I could say, I could check Defragler, and you notice it says perform two updates. Now, I do not have Defragler installed, but if I hit perform two updates, it's going to go ahead and download Defragler. 
and install it. It's kind of nice because I don't have to sit there and click next, 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 or install some optional crap. You know, it just installs Defragler, and you can see the icons on my desktop. Now, let's do another test here. CD Burner XP, I know, is usually laden with adware. Let's see if anything gets installed with CD Burner XP. Now, I have not tested this. I have no idea what's going to happen. I highly doubt that the the adware would get installed that's usually bundled with this with this thing. So So yeah, so you burner XP is installed. Let's see if uh, anything weird got installed along with it. You can usually find these things right here. If you just go to uninstall programs and see if there's any kind of adware in here. No, nah, didn't it? it's awesome. Love that. It's a cool little app. I mean, yeah, you can just run this off your USB stick. Um, it's not exactly perfect, but I would, you know, I run it. I'm running it on my other PCs right now. It's, you know, it's it's got a, a few tiny little issues where it can't do download some little app. Um, but yeah, I hope they take my suggestion. Just when it fails, you know, fail to start installation, put like a little hyperlink right there so I can run the installation myself and just try to, you know, go through it myself. So. Anyway, um, gosh, I've been busy with these videos lately. Uh, if you have something you want to request, um, I guess go ahead and put it in a comment or something. Or I don't know. I have to get that whole thing going again because I'm putting out videos like all the time now. So anyway, uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, later.